to the episode of Hallmark Hard Weeks, a podcast all about Hallmark movies. I am your host, Camille, and I am upside down, but I'm hoping that it will <laughs> correct itself on editing. But today I am joined by my special guest, Daniel DiTomaso, who was a star of Hallmark's movie, Welcome to Mamas. Oh, wait, and just recently he was guest starring on Station 19 but I'm so excited to have him. How are you, Daniel? I'm doing very well, thank you. Thank you for asking. Thank you for having me. And how are you? I'm good. Um, you, you have an accent. You're, you're Italian. You're actually Italian. You're, is, is that I am. your accent? I'm Italian Canadian. Yes. I'm Italian Canadian. My uh, three of my grandparents are Italian. So you're second generation? Uh, well, my, my grandmother was born in Italy, and two of my grandparents, their parents were born in Italy. Uh, mm. So I guess, yeah, two and a, two and a <laughs> half generation, I mean, third generation, second generation, somewhere in between. <laughs> That's what I always thought it is. Where do you start with the first generation thing? Do you start with like the generation that was born, or do you start with like the generation that came here? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I would. <laughs> But I do know that that culturally, um, I mean, I feel very Canadian. Mm. Born in Canada. But, but you uh, have very strong Italian roots. Yes, abs absolutely. Absolutely. Which yeah. is, I would assume, is very much like your character in Welcome to Mamas. Do you yeah, yeah, that was part of the appeal when I got the script. I thought, oh my gosh, this is what a wonderful opportunity to kind of explore the part of myself that maybe I pulled back in my other projects. I actually, uh, I actually spent quite a bit of time with, with, uh, you know, a dialect coach trying to neutralize my, my Montreal accent. And it was a way to kind of just give in to some of those gestures that come naturally to me and, and some of the rhythms and some of the, some of that cultural identity that, you know, doesn't always serve the actor well for everything, mm -hmm. but for this, project is perfect and uh yeah it's just a lot of fun um you play a chef who's frank franco franco or frank, frank. <laughs> and i know that um his his um signature dish was uh what's that called <laughs> the yeah. cake franco. De franco. <laughs> so yeah, like, yeah. is it franco franco but yeah, yeah. He, he thought it was pretty good. Critics didn't agree, but he thought it was. I love tiramisu. That's oh, the name too. of the cake, tiramisu. It's actually I... my favorite. My mom makes the best tiramisu. Everyone's mom makes the best dishes. <laughs> Can you, well, that is that leads me to my question. Can you cook? Ooh, I was afraid this question would come up. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to just shatter illusions out there if they exist. <laughs> I do a couple of things half decent, but I wouldn't consider myself a cook. Definitely not, you know, a chef. Um, but I was, I was, I mean, I did take the time for the film. Like they, they gave me a little time to kind of, I was, I was, the, it was in my hands working the food. That was me, you know. What's your signature dishes? Uh, minestrone. Uh, my mom's uh, makes the best minestrone and um, I like to do like a fresh pasta with maybe like a like zucchini and tomato very mm. super a little bit of garlic you know <laughs> a little olive oil cook the whatever you want uh, whatever pasta you want al dente and then you um, you in in a frying pan kind of just put a little that garlic and olive oil and uh, cut up some zucchini Right, get that, get that like a little bit softer, but not soft, soft, not mm. soggy, a little bit softer. And then you would, um, at the very end, last step is some fresh uh, cherry tomatoes, maybe chop up a bit and throw it in there uh, just to warm them up, but you don't want them to get soggy. Yeah. And then really delicious kind of summer pasta. God, you're making me And of hungry. course, you need a lot of Parmesan. <laughs> I'm a of tomato in there. First, you soft it and just, I mean, that's just the key to any good dish, right? Cheese. Yeah. God, I love Italian food. Like, my, I love going to Italian restaurants and like ordering 
I, um, I love the pasta dish. It's like mostly uh, pesto. Do you mean pesto dish is good? Um, it's spaghetti, but I prefer my mom's spaghetti. <laughs> Nothing bombs any, any, anything, you know. I know. It, it's funny because I'm Filipino. Um, when my family came here, I wasn't born here. I was born in the Philippines. And um, my mom would always, my parents would always want to go to a Filipino restaurant to eat. And I'm sitting there going, why? Your food is better. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean that, that, that is, like, you know, truthfully, I'm not crazy about American Italian restaurants myself right. because my my palate, my tastes, obviously I prefer my mother's home cooking and my take food. My grandmother's food. Yeah. But I will say this, um my family actually my father's side had an Italian restaurant. Mm. You know, they, they actually, my great grandmother started an Italian restaurant um, in 1934, I think. Wow. Was. And it was in the family for over 50 years. It was passed down to her, to my grandfather, and then my father and his three brothers. Um, it's actually one, one of the other reasons why this, this script, Welcome Mama, has resonated so much with me was, was it, it felt like it was kind of, you know, it wasn't oh. directly my family history, but it was... It was, um, it was very, it resonated quite a bit with kind of my family's experience a little bit, you know? So mm. um, not my particular experience, but my family's experience. Uh, so it was just, it was just special um, to me. Is the restaurant still open? No, unfortunately it is not still open, <sighs> uh, but, but it was actually, and it's a very taxing lifestyle for for a family. Obviously, you know, I mean, my dad was had to work quite a bit when it was uh, when he was running it. So, um, but some of some of my family's, you know, best memories, you know, happened around that that time in that in that restaurant. Uh, it was quite well known in Montreal as well. Wow. Yeah. That's that's big. I I mean, food is a I think it's a universal family thing, you know? It's just like everybody always has like dinner table memories or something. Oh, totally. All the all the <laughs> conversations happen around the table. You know, yep. sometimes sometimes there's conflict, but there's also a lot of love. Yep. And I think I mean that's one of the things for me, like the first if I even go back home to visit my parents now, if I walk in the door and there happens to be something cooking it just instantly takes me back to that. Just, you know, it's, it's safe. It's great. It's wonderful. It's I'm home, you know, and yeah. I think a lot of share that experience uh, with food. That's actually what some of my favorite scenes in Welcome to Mama's is when like all of the restaurant employees and, and are, are like sitting at that long table kind of thing and mama or um, Amy, I like at the head of the table, share their toast or whatever. And it's, it just feels like a family gathering. That's said in the movie, she said that you are family, not yeah. workers, you know? Right, right. Which is so cool. Which is so cool. I mean, if you think about it, we don't choose our family, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and in mama's situation, she, she, didn't, she didn't have children of her own and she essentially chose the, her family the people that she loved and wanted to be a part of of her life and her business and um it's quite she chose she, she chose amy and frank <laughs> yeah yeah she did she did and then eventually somehow managed to put us together i know i think that was i think that was definitely fate <laughs> yeah <laughs> But um, you worked with big name actors in that movie. I mean, Oscar, well, <laughs> Oscar well, my, nominated, my, Emmy nominated, yeah. Lorraine Bracco, Bracco, and none of these were fun. I mean, these are like big names. How is it working with those power women? Amazing. I had such an amazing time. Um, Lorraine Bracco, I was, uh, 
I've been a fan of for a while. She's been a couple of um, iconic projects that she was a part of, you know, one particular Sopranos. I watched a lot of Sopranos growing up and uh, I was excited to work with her. I was nervous, um, but all of those, I mean, it just, I met her and instantaneously she, she just grounded me. I mean, she is just the sweetest, most wonderful collaborator. Mm. I, I mean, she really cares about the work and she has no ego about it at all. I mean, she's quite a generous actor, actually. Um, I have one, one moment in particular. I remember this scene where she, Mama tells Frank, okay, here's the, here's the blank menu i want to give it to you i want you to write the menu now you're ready and frank frank is i can't believe it you're serious, serious okay great um it's not it's not scripted that she walks out in fact i think it's supposed to end on on her but we, we rehearsed it you know before you shoot you kind of have one kind of rehearsal just to figure out the blocking so they know where the camera's going to go or whatever and then she's standing there and she looks at me and she says no i think this is your moment and then she walks up and she wanted Frank to have that kind of end on Frank. I don't know what I, what I did. I, maybe he was just like, yes. <laughs> but, but she just instantly wanted to give that over, you know, to her scene partner. And it was uh, just a wonderful, just a wonderful experience working with her. There was another scene where she wasn't sure, you know, why she'd hire Frank given what was on the page and we kind of worked it a bit and on the day kind of played with it. And she, uh, we, we did it till we got it right, you know, just, um, and she, it's just, it's just awesome to see someone that's been working for such a long time at such a high level, still cares so much about, about what she's doing, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, that's inspiring. Meg, I, it sounds like she's very generous with her like co-stars co yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. And like I just lovely to work with. You yeah, know? that was cool. I mean, I, I I walked into the project with a ton of respect for for her as an actor, and then I, I left an even bigger fan, to be honest. And and Melanie it was also just fantastic. I mean, such a blast to work with Melanie. And something that, I mean, there's, you capture a bit of the humor in the project, you get a bit of that, but what you don't realize is like how funny she is. I mean, she's just, she's just so funny. Um, I think, I think, uh, yeah, and I didn't know her well before going into it, but I'm, you know, a fan of Melanie's now as well. Yeah, I like her um, facial expressions with several scenes with you. <laughs> but she's like, but I, like the um, the point of contention was the pinball machine. <laughs> oh right, yeah. Who puts a pinball machine in a dining room? <laughs> Frank does. <laughs> and she kept going like. Can we get rid of the, the pinball machine? And you're like, no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Galaxy Blast. Why would you? No. It was a lot of fun. And also, when, of she, fun. also she, when she walked in to the restaurant the first time, and she was like, what did you do to Namos? <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Poor, poor Frank. Just, uh, he... Well, that was just so cool about the story. I feel like they, you know, they both had their walls up and they both had their way of doing things. And, and essentially neither one would have worked without the other. Mm -hmm. And the moment they realized they complimented each other, um, yeah. it, you know, things turned around for their, for the business and for themselves, you know, yeah. kind of a well, what was your favorite part about doing the film? Um, what was my favorite part? I think, well, I just, I, I have to say, I, I just have a, I enjoy, I enjoy working. I have fun no matter what I'm doing, but this particular project, I think because it kind of resonated a bit closer to home for me, um, I was just a little, little bit more excited about it. A little bit extra bounce in my step. Uh, and I thought, 
my favorite element was just, I think the cast, I think everyone had a really, I think it was just really well cast. Everybody did a wonderful job, got along very well. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, your sous chefs were hilarious. Oh yeah. I mean, one of my favorite characters in the project was uh, was Sal. Yeah. When I read it, I was like, oh man, Sal. He's such a, <laughs> I don't know. I think Frank's gonna fall in love with Sal. You know, he's just such a wonderful guy. And, yeah. and Addy Finocchio is a great, great actor and a great guy. And we had a blast in our scenes, just kind of, you know, yeah. playing, playing tennis back and forth, you know, dialogue. And it was fun. It was a, uh, it was a very lighthearted, you know, easy viewing kind of nice little, little, little project. And, um, our director, Alan, Alan Harmon's done, he's like got so much experience. And that was also a wonderful learning experience for me because he, you know, he was a director that took the time to explain what he was going for or what he was kind of doing on the technical side, which as an actor, I haven't paid so much attention to. Like I have my eyes open on set. I like to know what's going on, but, but he really, he really uh, did a great job articulating kind of what he was trying to achieve. And uh, so I found myself learning a lot on that end, you know? So it was just a very positive experience for me um, overall. Would you do another Hallmark movie? Absolutely, yeah. If they'll, if they'll have me, sure. Um, they're yeah. wonderful people. Uh, yeah, the, the um, fandom is very, um, has got some problems, but <laughs> it's a pretty nice. Sorry? I said the Hallmark fandom has some problems, but we're nice too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was amazed at how passionate, you know, the fans are. I have uh, a lot of a newfound appreciation for, for, for Hallmark, uh, partly because of how, you know, excited and passionate and vocal the fans are. It's really, it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so to turn gears, um, we are going to talk about Station 19. Um, you played Jeremy. And I did, yes. For those who don't know, who are only just listening to this, this is a Hallmark podcast. Station 19 is a, a spinoff of Grey's Anatomy where they talk about Seattle Fire Department, the Station 19 firefighters. And the main character is Andy. And and backstory of Jeremy is that Jeremy and Andy met at a bar, right? And they kind of hit it off, flirting, having fun, dancing, whatever it's like you do with most people at the bar. And Jeremy turns into a jerk and a saucer. A monster. Turns into a monster, yeah. Tries to rape her um she fights back and the he gets punched in the throat or something and well this past week's episode was we find out that jeremy passed away from his injuries okay so i am gonna have a hard time with this <laughs> but Let's talk Jeremy. How did you get the script for Station 19? And were, were you, uh, did you watch Station 19 before? I have, you... I have Station 19. Um, mm. I, haven't, I haven't caught up all the way to the current season. Mm. I had uh, seen a fair amount of it. And the script came to me, the, the, the role came to me through uh, the director uh, Stacy K. Black, who I've worked with previously on um, Major Crimes a couple times. Um, mm -hmm. She is a wonderful, wonderful director, very talented, very thoughtful. And Stacy uh, said, I have, you know, I think you'd, I think you'd be, you could have a role for you. I think this would be a good role for you. Um, I didn't even know, I didn't know what it was at the time, but I, but I, but Stacy's fantastic. And I love working with her. And I just, uh, anything Stacey is a part of, she wants me, uh, sign me up, you know? So, yep. so I committed to it. And, uh, and I'll tell you, it was, uh, 
not what I expected. <laughs> but uh, if so, if a director had told me, "Oh, I have the perfect role for you," and then I find out that this role is right. like no, a no, no. horrible person, no. so I'd be sitting there going, "Like, what, do you, what kind of person do you think I am?" No, no. It, as an actor, you know, I, right? I mean, sure. <laughs> but but as an actor, I think it to to for me personally, I'll speak for myself. I was humbled that I would be trusted with such a character because it's not an it's not a it's not a likable character. It's not um, an easy portrayal. It's it's not something that's fun to prepare. Um, and I so, and I recognize the seriousness of the story that that they're trying to tell. You know the responsibility of that. And so to trust me with it um, was humbling. And and. Uh, I appreciate I appreciate that thought, you know. So, so, um, so yeah, it was it was a challenge um, for everybody involved. It was a it was potentially triggering for for many, uh, but it was a story that I think um, they I mean I can't speak for the creatives, but that it, it you know it's just, it's something that happens. It's a terrible terrible reality. Um, and it's a story that can't be shied away from. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the, the, I think the goal is to create awareness and, and to, if possible, offer some type of, um, if, if, if some type of solidarity or, or inspiration or identification with it can be found and, and can lead to, to to someone to seek help or someone to stand up for themselves or someone to um, uh, go after a perpetrator. I, I think that's the goal, you know, um, but definitely not an easy topic to cover. Uh, but I, I believe that the team, the team behind it is incredibly committed to doing so in an honest and thoughtful and tactful way. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I hope, I hope it was received as best as it could have been received, given the context and given the, you know, what it was. Um, um, yeah, it was uh, quite a night of TV. How was it working with Jaina, the artist? Fantastic. I was, I mean, that's especially, I mean, those types of. Um, those types of roles and that, that type of, uh, um, I guess, you, yeah, interaction can be can be tricky. Mm -hmm. And of course, it is a it is a TV set, so tremendous care is taken. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's choreographed over and over and over again. In many ways, I'm a participant in that. Like it's a dance that Jaina leads. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything that I do is really a simulation, just following her around. And she pretty much physically acts everything out and I do my best to simulate what's happening. Um, and she's, uh, she was unbelievable. Her energy was unbelievable. Her commitment to, to being honest and truthful about it was incredible. Uh, and, and she was just, she was, I didn't know her going into the project and I, I felt like I had, I had gained a tremendous amount of respect for her as an artist and as a performer, um, having worked with her. I know that she's a um, dancer. And I, I feel like with this yeah, fight it's, sequence, it's choreography. So that yeah. probably helped too. Oh, with she's getting... extremely gifted with movement. So so that absolutely helped. In fact, I was like, you know, as I was trying to get this, <laughs> this right, at half speed, you know, I'm like, I don't want to hurt anybody. I'm just trying to make sure. But she was, uh, she was so patient with me, and she's just so good and has such command over her body. Um, that, uh, yeah, for sure, that's very, a very astute observation. Her experience with dance um, really lended itself to her selling that. It is. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was uh, hard to watch, which let which. Should, it's a compliment because that's how realistic it is. You know what I mean? To both of you, how you guys did that. Um, 
how hard was it for you personally? You know what I mean? To because you, you're like I would never do. For me, I would think to myself like I would never do this. I don't know what, how people could be stooped that low to even think like this. Mm-hmm. How do you like go from that mentality to yeah, I'm that. You get what I'm saying? To like embracing that evilness that's in the character. I wouldn't if I, right. I wouldn't say I ever embraced the evilness. I, I, you know, it's a very that's a very good question. And if I'm going to be, you know, I hate to admit this because I like to think that oh, well, you know, I'm an actor and I, I access can access anything. I did have a lot of trouble understanding mm. why mm. a person would do this. Um, mm. You know, in, in, all, in all scenes, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, the Hallmark, a Hallmark movie or this, you know, something as heavy as this and terrible as this, what this character did. You, you try to f- find a reference point, some, some point where you can ground yourself and, and, and understand why you're doing something. You have to know the why. You have to find the intention to, you know, and this was a difficult one for me. And I don't know if I ever accessed it. Um, and I can't say I really wanted to, if, if I'm going to be totally honest about it. I, it was, a, it was a tough one. It was a tough one for me. I, I'm, I'm happy to hear that, that look, it's a, it's a television show and they can do a lot with editing and they can do a lot, you know, if we're moving half speed, if a quick cut can make it look like it's, it's, you know, a lot more violent than it is. We didn't have to commit in the way that I think the audience thinks right. it's a trick. Right. And I think yep. that's safety and to, to protect yourself physically, but also emotionally. I mean, we are actors and we are expected to go places that, that, you know, generally you can't, don't, wouldn't ask a, a, you know, someone to do, but the degree in which we explore those places is a personal choice and actors reserve the right to, to invest in that as they feel they can mentally and emotionally do. Um, and, you know, I think that, you know, I've done projects before where there were there was physical contact and altercation, um, the illusion of it, obviously, but there were intimacy coordinators there, mm-hmm. uh, people to talk to, depending on how you felt about it, and if you needed to kind of process what you put yourself through, yeah. because because even. We're, we're, it's a movie set and we know we're just acting and we know that it's a safe place and tremendous care is taken when we shoot these types of things. I mean, I'll tell you that the team, the creative team was beyond uh, patient and understanding and, and, and careful with it all. But still, as some, some people uh, might have to debrief in a way just to come back to kind of, okay, that was, that's done. That was make-believe. Now it's time to kind of. Get back to reality. A- absolutely. Absolutely. So, so yeah, and everyone's process is different. And I respect, I respect every in- individual actor's um, process. I mean, it's how they do it. Um, for this particular one, I, I think I was a degree separated from it. it uh, and, and that's where I felt safe doing it and where I felt I would best serve the production uh, also, you know? Uh, so, so that's, that's, that's it, but. Um, well, yeah. what, what would you like to, what would you like people, victims to get from this? I mean, I know you already said that you'd want them to at least be encouraged to speak out and stuff, right. but. Um, what else would you like them to get from this? Like for me, it's so hard to watch. It was hard. I know that. I know that is the 
part of my brain is saying it's real. It's not real. These are, this is TV. This is, um, you're a good person. Jada is a good person. Nobody got hurt for real. But like mm -hmm. you said, it does happen in real life. And so right. it portrays real. And I myself have been through it. It's, and it's, it's like, I want rage, <laughs> if that makes sense. But I don't want rage from women. I want rage from the men that these, that these men are out there. You get what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I do understand that. I think it's, as a society, okay, so that's a, I'll, I'll try and address the first part of your question. What would I, what would I hope that people get from it? I think, The television shows we watch, the content that, that, that's created, I think, I mean, besides entertainment, I think you want people to feel things. Mm -hmm. um, and so obviously something as loaded as that episode of Station 19, people are going to feel things and right. you have to expect that it's going to trigger all sorts of feelings. Um, yes. And it can be very difficult. And I, I would hope, I would hope that it, it, it maybe is the catalyst of, of a greater conversation among people that, that creates awareness, that, that provokes and inspires society and men uh, to to champion these victims in a way that perhaps we 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 fail to, partly because we're not aware. If it hasn't happened to you or someone that you care about, it's it's out of mind. You know, I mean, you know it exists, and it's a terrible thing, but it's different to to intellectually be aware of something and then to feel something, to feel an, a great injustice, to feel the violation, to feel the, um, uh, the, the failure on society's part for, you know, Andy, you know, when, when yeah. she, she's actually held accountable for what happens in a way. Now, I, I can't speak to everything that happens. I, I, you know, I don't wanna, but, but um, so, so create that greater conversation and people are, could be angry, there could be hurt, and, and I mean, hopefully, hopefully it's, it, that's not the case entirely. I, I, hope, I hope that some positive can come from the conversation that has spawned off this very, very raw, hor horrible experience, storyline, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's such, such an interesting conversation to have after talking about Welcome to Mamas. I mean, it couldn't be further, <laughs> couldn't be further, for, you know. The, I the, know, rap, it's like. It couldn't be further. It's so, it's so much to wrap my mind around it. But um, yeah, I think, I think as a society, as a man who wants to be a valuable member of society, I think I'm, res you know, responsible for offering my support, offering offering whatever support I can to people, uh, to, to victims, whether that is to create a safe place to talk about it, whether that is to encourage people to speak out, um, make sure there's no judgment. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very complex taboo issue usually uh, in, in mainstream media it's not really fully addressed or explored and i think that's partly because it triggers a discomfort and we don't like to go there um but if we don't go there i think i think uh we don't make progress in addressing you know how we take care of the people that are affected by this and how we hold those responsible for it uh, you know 
accountable. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, um, I don't know if that answers your question. It does. I, don't, I would say as a viewer, now I have an interesting perspective. I was, I was in it in conversation about it with creatives, yeah. with Jaina, you know, with, um, but I would hope again that the, that the male viewer, they're not immune to what they're seeing. I would, yeah. I would hope that that they that is that the they i they can experience the the horrible i don't hope they experience the horrible violation of it but 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 they can identify with how brutal it is and yeah. how triggering and, and terrifying the aftermath can be and therefore be be a, a system of support more so than if had they not seen it. I'm, I'm not sure yeah. what I'm trying to then, then I'm, I'm hoping it speaks to everyone, yeah. you know? And now I don't know if, I don't know if that message is directed at a predator, you know, a predator is a predator. Yeah, it's gonna happen. I, I, I don't know how you, we have to protect people from predators i don't know how we get to the predators yeah. how do we prevent the predatory behavior i i hope through education i mean i i'm i'm i'm, I'm raising a i have a three-year-old now and, and yeah and, and you know he will have to as parents you, you want your child to to grow up to be a loving caring responsible person right and you we have to teach our boys specifically um, how to be an ally. I think I think good people innately, you know, empathize and 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 they can yeah. act quite easily. But I I think it's still worth really driving home, you know, how important it is to to respect people, to respect women, to respect no, to, to, you know, to be, to be a true ally. Um, and, and the more we, we can just get to our children um, young and raise them to be just wonderful people. I mean, hopefully, uh, you know, society moves in that direction and we have more allies than we do, than we do, you know, perpetrators. I mean, that's, 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 that would be my that would be my hope anyways i feel like this uh this interview highlights the what is that the wide spectrum of subjects you got the happy go lucky <laughs> and are you were heavy <laughs> oh it's uh hard it's a hard chat but it's but it's i think a necessary a necessary yeah. uh talk now, to have i i always tell people more, you know, especially those who say things like, you know, Hallmark, we, we, we want the fluff in Hallmark. I'm like, but life isn't fluff, all fluff. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's, you know, horrible. It's not rainbows and butterflies and stuff like that. So I want to thank you for coming on and talking about the hard stuff, not just the rainbows and butterflies and dreamland of Hallmark, you know what I mean? No, it was my pleasure. And um, I'd come back anytime to chat with you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you have any future projects? I know you said that you had a Hallmark movie, but you, that didn't work out. <laughs> do you have a, any yeah. others? Well, there, I mean, we were trying to work something out. Didn't, you know, we couldn't work it out uh, with scheduling, et cetera, but yeah. um, I, I mean, I would hope to work with, with Hallmark again, absolutely. And I have something that I'll be, well, we'll see. I mean, maybe checking with me in two weeks and then Ooh. no, <laughs> well, I can't, I can't speak to it exactly this second, but um, may take me to, uh, may take me to Europe actually do some. So, so. Um, Are you going yeah. back to Italy or another part of Europe? Would you be going back to Italy yeah. or Europe? No, Italy. Yeah. yeah.
Well, thank you so much for joining me. And I am hoping for future projects more from you. I can't wait to see. And thank you for coming. Grazie. Thank you for having me. Bless. Bye. Right, take care. Bye-bye.